lesson for. Alright, let's ro let's let's roll these out pretty quick. Improper fractions control numbers. Letter A. Go. 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 Alright, stop right there for a minute. I'll just kinda add a couple little 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 bonus questions here. Give me the reciprocal for all four. It's not up there as a warm-up, but let's just practice it because it's good practice. You gotta give me all four though. Look on. The dark side of the group. Look the dark side of the group. Me yeah, have go. Go get a can of crap. Okay, yeah, just flip some yeah. steps. One over six, one over twelve, one over one oh one, and one over twenty-six. Alright, lot like denominators. When you do this, preferably you want to find what's called the lowest common denominator, which I'm going to refer to from here on out as LCD. Find the LCD. Okay, you'll hear it a few more times throughout this throughout module two. What should be the lowest common denominator times four? Yeah. Yes. Sometimes, but not always, you'll get the LCD by taking two denominators by the four and multiplying. You'll always get a common denominator that way. You won't necessarily get the lowest, but in this case it works. Alright, it's just like four corners like you did back in ratios. Val, finish it up. Three fourths is equivalent to how many twentieths. Good. It is fifths. Okay, great. Here's one of those cases where the LCD is not. You'll get a common denominator, that's not the lowest. Good. I've got a question for you. Did anybody. Oh, you can't do it with that one. Next one you can. On this one. First, what's the lowest common denominator? There's two ways of looking at it. Glutch. Can anybody do an LCD of three? Can anybody do an LCD of six? Both would be right. But if you choose to go three, what does this become? Because this gets changed. See what she did? She scaled this down to two thirds. Okay? Either or is fine. Whether you got both as two thirds or both as four sixths. It's good. Right? We got Jake. Yeah, Jake, you have a lesson four? Yeah. Okay, go. Alright, this is somewhat what we did here in the warm up or after the warm up. Very important, okay, is to be able to take a word problem and put it into a mathematical expression. And the order is going to matter with divisions. And I want you to read it to yourself, and then I'll call on you to tell me what the division expression should be. I can't stress to you enough how important it is to be able to take a word problem and change it to a mathematical expression. If you can't do it, the order gets reversed, everything that you do after that point is going to be wrong. So sometimes it does help. Sometimes it helps to kind of model it and draw it to see what you're doing. I have how much trail mix? How much trail mix, Chris? I have three fourths, right? I have to share that amongst how many friends? Six friends. I'm just doing a rough sketch model. One too many, right? I'm gonna look at this for a minute. I'm gonna take this and share it amongst six friends. Three fourths divided by six is my expression. That's six divided by three fourths. That's not this. Okay? 
if you want me to model that, I can. Watch, I'll show you what three fourths. Shade three. That's what six divided by three fourths looks like. That's not the same as this. And it helps you. All of lesson four, you get stuck. I probably shouldn't tell you this, but I will. Common Core doesn't want me to tell you this, but I will. Everything in lesson four that you do, this is a double check. This number is going to be larger. Okay? The second number is going to be larger in the division expression. Now, when you go and you do how many, what, and what, what becomes my think statement? Sam, go ahead. How many? Right. That always is the case when you go from expression to think statement, the order gets reversed. Comes to this question. You're taking three fourths. You have three fourths, and you're dividing that even more into, into six people. So is our answer going to be greater than one or less than one? Visualize it. I've got three quarters. I have less than one. That's three quarters, less than one. And I'm dividing it in six ways. Obviously, less than one. Okay, let's go through the whole model process. So you need to see it. You really do. I do not have a common denominator. I must get one. We don't have a mixed number, so we're okay, but we need a common denominator. What should our common denominator be? Sure. Absolutely. Three fourths gets untouched. We're going to keep that three fourths. Six over one is equivalent to how many fourths? Okay. Got it. Okay. So now I'm going to rewrite my thing statement with my common denominator. How many? 24 fourths. And three fourths. I need somebody to come up and circle my go to. And come up and do it in red. I need somebody to come up and circle my leap by. Label it to mine, please. Circle it in green. Everything has to be a certain way. I'm like neurotic when it comes to making things nice and easy. Very good. Okay, we're just about out of time, so all I want you to write now is number all of your lines in the number line. And if you want to cheat, you can. Watch how I'm going to cheat. I'm going to put the first fraction because I need to know it's out of fourths. So don't leave yet. No, I don't want that on you. One fourth. And then everything else is in the, in the form of fourths. So two fourths, three fourths. Label it all the way, and once you're done with that, you can pack up and we'll pick it up third period. Okay. Come back third, ready to learn. Everything's labeled, right? Where is or what number of these two is my go to? Dylan, be careful. Just me saying be careful indicates that which number should it be. Okay, if this helps you, when you get your think statement, the second number will always be your go to. That never changes, no matter what, whether you're doing lesson three, lesson four, or even lesson one and two. When you get your think statement created, if you can remember this and get it into your head, 
the second number is always your go-to no matter what. This then makes my lead buy. And, and keep somewhere in the back of your mind even more that remember that our, our answer is going to be less than one. We've already established that. All right, ready? Three-fourths. Who wants to come up and make a dotted line on the number line where my go-to is? We'll do it in green. Okay, come on up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where is green? Here, give me a finger. Don't pick that. All right, make, you know what? Do me a favor. Go, go right through it. Go right through it so we can see a little bit more. All right, great. Now, our leap by is, we're leaping by 24. Let me ask you this. Do you already see that we have, we don't have a complete leap? Yes. Do you see why it's less than one? Yes. Our first leap, guess what? We don't have a complete leap. Our first leap is a partial leap. First leap is a partial leap. So now we know, oh, partially, it's got to be less than one. we got to figure out how much it is less than one, though. we still got to come up with a fractional value. Okay. Do you remember the, was this the, was this the Remlerian theory, or was this, the, it's the Remlerian theory. What's our denominator have to be in? Right, I, we, two days ago, one day, whatever it was, if, if it helps you, our leap by number is our denominator of our fraction. So we know it's something over 24. That's the hardest part. How many lines do you have? Count them after zero and compare. Three out of 24. That is my answer. Now I do want to reduce it. Because there's a number that will go into both that allow me to simplify this. Can you remember? Got it. Final answer on? Really good. A lot of steps here to model it. I, 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 will, I will admit that. But it does help you to see that, oh, we don't have a full leap. It's got to be less than one. Two different shortcuts. I'll do it with common denominators, and then we'll do it with reciprocal fractions. The hard part is that we already have equivalent fractions. We have 24 fourths divided by, or in this case, 24 fourths. Uh, uh, no, 3 fourths divided by 24 fourths. And it gets a little crazy here, but watch what I'm going to do. Twenty-four fourths, right? I'm going back before I'm trying to remember it. Is that correct? Go back and look. I, it's, not a, it's not a thing statement. It's my division. It was 3 fourths, looking here now. And we took this and made it into 24 fourths. All right, are we okay with that? Turn it back and forth. Three divided by 24, are you okay with that? Yeah. Who's in the house? Who's outside the house? Who's out? Four is now out because it's bigger number into a smaller number. We know it can't go once because our, our numbers, our answers, less than one. We know that. Twenty-four goes into three. How many times? Zero. zero. Make it. <laughs> now it tells you it's going to be between zero and one. Zero times twenty-four. Zero. Subtract. Yeah. Three. Ready? Remainder is always numerator. 
equalizer is always denominator. 3 24ths, which you can reduce to make 1 8th if you want. You do not, that's a good question. When you're doing fractions, we don't care about going to termination. It's going to go until these numbers are done using then whatever your remainder is, what you've always done in fifth grade, remainder of whatever, just remainder becomes numerator, and whatever number's outside the house becomes denominator. So that's using like denominators. Now the quickest way. Quickest way is reciprocal fractions. With reciprocal fractions, guess what? I don't have to worry about improper fractions. Well, I do. But I don't have to worry about getting a common denominator. What was my original division expression? Before we changed anything. Job. Give it to me as a divide. First number divided by second number. What was the first one? Right. Divided by. Okay, ready? Watch. And now see how quick this is. Change this to what? This is 6 over 1. I'm going to do reciprocal, which is... So easy. Me likey. Now... Still got to reduce it, but guess what you're going to learn in lesson number nine? It's called cross-reducing, which we'll, we will tackle in lesson nine. Makes it even easier. Okay? Yes, sir. All right. Yeah. All right, ready? How much time we got? Example two, and yes, I want you to model it one more time. Okay, I just want to make sure you get that whole idea of modeling. Okay. You work with partners, okay? Show it to me after example two is done. I do not have a key hand hanging up, so everybody's got to show me. Can I? Not yet, you're recording. Uh -huh. 